Why a new junk box universal keyboard sustain pedal? Well, a while back I made the original junk box keyboard sustain pedal. And it works fine on the keyboard that I had at the time. Without the sustain pedal, plug it in. And with the sustain pedal, works great. However, time goes on, I got a new keyboard, plugged in the old sustain pedal, didn't touch it, and wait a minute, it's sustaining and I'm not pressing anything down. I wonder what happens when I press it down. working opposite of what it should be working. I wonder why. Well, it turns out that the original pedal was a normally off sustain pedal. The pedal I need for the new keyboard has to be a normally on sustain pedal. So my new pedal has to be able to do both. The new universal pedal design let you set it up as either a normally on or normally off pedal. We still have the rubber band providing the tension. I'll take that off so we can see this better. We create this contact with aluminum foil around the pedal lever and then we have two other contacts, one right here and then one down on the bottom. So in this case with this wire over here this pedal is normally off and it goes on when the pedal is pressed and these two make contact. If I move the wire down to the bottom then the exact opposite occurs and the pedal is normally on because this is making contact and when I press it breaks the contact and the pedal is off. Just like the previous design this pedal is made from junk box parts. Some scraps of wood some aluminum foil, screws and nuts, an old cable that I had lying around, and some paint. Pretty easy to do, so let's see how we do it. Let's start out with the base. You can see I've drilled a series of holes, and on the bottom I've countersunk these four holes. I've used half inch material, can be anything, but it should be at least a half inch, it can also be three quarters. We have this top, and this top is made out of one, two, three, four, five pieces. So the front is right here, the back is here. And I've used quarter inch material. I had some old material and I cut it down to a quarter inch. The two sides are right here. And these are three quarter inch thick material. And finally here's the top, another quarter inch piece. I have one and a quarter inch drywall screws. And I have number 440 machine screws that are one half inch long and I also have matching nuts. In this case I have 440 nuts. Now the uh, pedal itself is made up, here's the the major portion of the pedal. You see I have a notch and a hole drilled here. And this part of the pedal is made up with two three-quarter inch by three and a half inch long pieces of wood that are put together in this fashion like this and then they're shaped any way you'd like or they could just stay like this. Then I have this mechanism here that supports the pedal and also it makes one of the contacts and you notice one of those screws is used as a pivot for this. Here's the two pieces they are essentially identical except this hole on one piece is countersunk. Here's the pieces here. We look at the top. They're like that. We look at the bottom. 
there like that. And finally, we have this top piece has two bigger holes that are both countersunk and then one small hole that the machine screw fits in. I've spread the glue. Now I'm going to place them here. I'll give that sufficient time to set and while that's going on we'll start putting this together. The first thing we're going to do is take one of the 440 nuts and screws, put the nut on the screw and thread it into this hole in the back. Just like that. Now I have two of the drywall screws which I'm just going to thread in. Okay. Now I'm going to put this mechanism on. I'm going to find the one with the countersink and I'm going to put it here with the hole facing this way. And I'm going to take the two screws, put them in here because the holes, I made the holes purposely larger so that we could have some adjustment just in case we didn't drill it exactly precisely. Now I'm going to take this piece with the countersinks on top, turn it over, and thread this machine screw in here. Okay, now I can put the nut on here. Again, this is going to allow me to put the lead in there. Now I take this I have one last glue up to perform. I put the glue on and place this right on top. Now before I install the aluminum on the pedal lever, I'm going to fit it in here. So what I do is take the last remaining screw and put it in until I feel it grab. Then I move this around until I hit the, hit the hole. And it should be right about here. And there it is. I can feel it. You'll notice it's right about a quarter of an inch from this cutout. So, okay. I've adjusted these two contact screws. So this one contacts at this position, and this one contacts around here. And I've also screwed in this last contact screw. I'll take it out again when I put the aluminum foil on. I have my rubber band. And that feels nice to me. I've rounded off and sanded the top cover. And you see the top cover is going to fit just like that. Now I'm going to cover this area here with the aluminum foil. And it's important that I cover the bottom and the top here and this hole so it makes one big contact. I've cut a piece of household aluminum foil one inch by about two and three quarters. And now I measured back a quarter inch from the edge of this and I'm going to apply glue. So that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to take it and rather than wrapping it like this I start here and sort of center it like this so that it's on the line. Bring it around like this and then put it over like that. I'm just going to snip in here and get rid of this. We don't need that. Take a pencil and push it through on both sides. I want to get this snugged up against this side. I'll take the last nut, put it on, and if you look you can see this is making contact here and this is making contact here. But before I make the connection I'm going to have to finish this. 
one thing you, you have to do is you have to cut a little opening in here to let the cable through. So that works very nice. So now I can finish everything up and put it all back together. I've completed the project, painted it up. I had some metallic silver paint that I sprayed on. So I had some old stair tread material that I put on here for anti-skid. I also drilled two additional holes and put pilot holes in and put some more drywall screws in to attach this top to the base. And it's all ready to go. I actually made two because I have two keyboards. So I have one for one keyboard and one for the other. And I made the pedals a little different so I could distinguish between the two of them. Great project. Why don't you build one of your own?